Hi, my name is Jolt Tiame Vishontai, and I'm the concertmaster of the Philharmonia Orchestra. I sit at the front of the orchestra and my job is to help the conductor keep the ensemble together and to help communicate the character of the music. The violin is the highest instrument in the string family. In orchestras, the violins are split into two sections. The first violins, who usually have the melody, and the second violins, who often support the first violins with harmony. The sound of the violin is created by making its four strings vibrate. The four strings tuned G, D, A and E are stretched across the bridge and tuned with the help of pegs at the top and sometimes fine tuners on the tailpiece. The sound then resonates throughout the wooden body with the help of a small piece of wood inside called the sound post. Most of the time we use a bow to create sound by drawing it across the strings, like this. The bow is made from wood and horsehair. The horsehair gets coated in rosin, which is a hard resin from trees. The rosin creates more friction between the bow and the strings, which means they vibrate more, making a louder sound. There are many techniques using the bow and we describe them using Italian and French words. Here are a few. Legato, which means smooth. Staccato, which means separated. Spiccato, which is bouncing or stringy. Tremolo, to tremel, colegno, literally with the wood, which is a percussive effect, sul tasto, on the fingerboard, which is light and airy, or sul ponticello, on the bridge, which is harsh and abrasive. We can also pluck the strings, and this is called pizzicato, which means to pluck or pinch in Italian. It can be very delicate or dramatic and percussive. On the violin we can also do um, special sounds which are called harmonics, or also in French, flageolet, um, which we put the finger basically not completely on the string, just we, we touching the string like this. These are called the natural harmonics. And then we also have um, the artificial harmonics where we're using basically two fingers on one string, um, which we use the first, mostly the first finger on, let's say, on the D string, and then we put a, a fourth, the fourth finger on the same string, and that creates two octaves higher than what we play. To making the sound sweeter and um, making the sound also more um, more interesting, we have uh, something it's called vibrato. You can, if, if you ask me how many vibratos we have, I don't know, because um, I think there are like millions of kinds of vibratos. We can vibrate very slow, or really fast, and then of course with every finger. We can 
first vibrate only with the wrist, or we vibrate with the whole arm. It is um, quite difficult because the, the thing leading an orchestra is not something you learn from like today to tomorrow. Um, I think it's it's trying in every orchestra. I think it's different how to lead the orchestra, and um, of course there's a lot of body language involved. But also, it's also the question um, where you actually have to lead and where you actually just leave the orchestra play or the section play. Um, of course, I use if I show that. Of course, I can I can use quite a lot of body language, like moving my violin up and down, or like something you know. Uh, doing doing the beat or something like that, but then I can also just, for example, just lean my 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 head back and actually even just looking to them, something like this that that they see okay now attention or something like this. And sometimes it's even it's just enough to show something like a change with a finger, something like this, because then every every a desk is seeing that, and every desk is basically passing the message. So you can see there can be leading an orchestra can be like really big. You can almost like jump up and jump down, which must might not help, but sometimes. <laughs> um, and you can also lead an orchestra, or you can also lead a section, which which like o only demonstrating how you change a finger or something like this. Of course, I have my own style to to lead an orchestra, but there are certain ways that I have to adapt it to the conductor. If if I play in different orchestras, I always have to see how how the orchestra works. In some orchestras, I only need to do small moves, and that's already enough. Or in some orchestras, I really need to move very very a lot and even say something how to do it or how to how to react. For example, like pizzas or chords. It's a, it's a little bit like like being a teacher. I mean, you can't teach a person every person in the same way. You also have to adapt to the person how how they react. If you've enjoyed learning about the instruments in the orchestra, why not try our iPad app, The Orchestra, featuring Essa Pekka Salonen and the Philharmonia Orchestra. Fully interactive video playback lets you view the orchestra from all angles and the revolutionary beat map shows you who is playing when. Follow along with synchronized scores. Hear the inside scoop in audio commentaries and get a 360 degree view of all the instruments. Available for download in the App Store on iTunes.